Bees face a challenging puzzle. How to save up honey, the vital food source for the colony during the cold winter months? Honeycombs are their solution for this. Kepler was intrigued by the shape of honeycombs because they're constructed by a living entity. While he was looking for the force that shapes snowflakes, he also wanted to figure out why bees choose to create hexagons. Johannes Kepler, the renowned astronomer and mathematician, was indeed fascinated by the structure of honeycombs, but his interest was not solely focused on the bees' architectural prowess. Rather, Kepler's interest in honeycombs was connected to his broader exploration of geometric shapes and their efficiency in nature. This interest eventually led him to discover what is now known as the Kepler conjecture, a famous problem in geometry. In his work titled, On the Six-Cornered Snowflake, Strina Seu de Nive Sexangula, published in 1611, Kepler discusses various geometric configurations and their relation to efficient space filling. In this treatise, he investigates the most efficient way to pack spheres, such as snowflakes, in a confined space. As part of his exploration of efficient packing, he also considers the hexagonal cells of honeycombs. Kepler was intrigued by the hexagonal pattern of honeycombs and wondered why bees naturally constructed their hives in this manner. He theorized that the hexagonal cells were the most efficient way for bees to use wax and construct a storage space with minimal effort. He even suggested that this efficiency could be related to the nature of spheres, which are also hexagonally arranged when packed tightly. Kepler's interest in honeycombs and their geometric efficiency was an early exploration into what is now known as space filling and packing problems in mathematics. His insights and ideas laid the foundation for further investigations into these areas, and his work contributed to the development of the field of geometry. While Kepler's ideas were not fully developed or proven during his time, his curiosity and exploration of these concepts paved the way for later mathematicians to tackle questions of efficiency, patterns, and spatial arrangements in nature. Considering Darwin's insights, we could suggest that the solution involves natural selection, a straightforward yet powerful concept. If a trait or behavior that's passed down provides an advantage in the competition for survival, known as the struggle for life, then that's the key. All the physical features, actions, and creations of an organism are called its phenotype, and this is what natural selection acts upon. If natural selection is behind the honeycomb structure, we should be able to figure out why bees gain an advantage from making them hexagonal. While Charles Darwin did not extensively write about honeycombs and its structure specifically, he did indeed have an interest in bees and their behaviors. Darwin's curiosity about the natural world was far-reaching, and he conducted various observations and experiments on different aspects of biology, including insects like bees. Darwin used bees as an example to illustrate his ideas about natural selection. He discussed how the traits of worker bees, such as their sterile nature and cooperative behavior, could be understood in the context of his theory of evolution. He conducted a series of experiments to understand the cell-making instincts of the hive bee. In his work, On the Origin of Species, he discussed the remarkable instincts and behaviors of honeybees, particularly their cell-making abilities. Darwin was fascinated by the intricate processes and instincts that bees exhibited in constructing their hives and honeycombs. He believed that these behaviors provided insight into the evolution of social behavior and adaptation. Darwin marveled at the precision with which honeybees constructed their hexagonal cells. He considered their behavior an example of instinctive geometry, as they were able to create perfectly regular hexagons without any formal education or understanding of geometry as humans do. He wrote about this in Chapter 7, Instinct, of, On the Origin of Species. He speculated that the honeybee's instincts for constructing hexagonal cells were developed over countless generations of gradual improvement. Those bees that were slightly better at constructing hexagons would have had a reproductive advantage, leading to the refinement and preservation of this instinct over time. Darwin saw this as a process of natural selection acting on inherited traits, shaping the behaviors of bees over time. In the book, Darwin wrote, A cell has been observed by Huber to be constructed by a bee, was the first hexagon ever formed, and that it has been fashioned by the unassisted efforts of the individual working bee, without the foresight of anyone. He may, I think, safely conclude that this is absolutely the truth. 
Darwin's exploration of the cell-making instincts of hive bees contributed to his broader understanding of instinctive behaviors, adaptation, and natural selection. To identify these simple instincts, Darwin made comparisons between different species of bees, including their hive-making behaviors, in his work. One such example is his study of the honeybee, Apis mellifera, and the Mexican stingless bee, Melipona domestica. He observed that while the honeybee constructs its hive in an intricate and efficient manner, the stingless bee's nest-building behaviors were less architecturally accomplished, a simpler geometrical form, intermediate between no structure at all and the hexagons of the honeybees. This comparison was used to highlight the diversity of behaviors and adaptations that arise due to different environmental and ecological factors. Darwin's observations of these bee species underscore his interest in understanding the intricate relationships between organisms and their environments. His study of bees, along with various other examples from the natural world, contributed to his development of the theory of evolution by natural selection. By comparing the behaviors and adaptations of different species, including their architectural achievements, Darwin aimed to shed light on the processes that drive biological diversity and the complex interplay between organisms and their surroundings. We may safely conclude that if we could slightly modify the instincts already possessed by the melipona, this bee would make a structure as wonderfully perfect as that of the hive bee. Darwin collaborated with William Bernhard Tegetmeyer, a fellow naturalist, in conducting experiments related to bee behaviors and hive construction. Tegetmeyer was known for his expertise in poultry and beekeeping, and his collaboration with Darwin allowed them to explore various aspects of bee biology and behaviors. Through these experiments, they likely aimed to test and validate their hypotheses about bee behaviors, including cell-making instincts and other aspects of hive construction. They added different colored dyes to the beeswax, enabling them to create a visual record of the construction process, and were able to conclude that bees first build cylindrical cells that are subsequently modified to form hexagons. Darwin concludes that bees build hexagonal honeycombs because they are the most economical way of dividing up their honey storage area. Hexagonal shape allowed bees to use the least amount of wax while maximizing the storage capacity within the hive. The angles and sides of hexagons provide a way to partition the space efficiently, allowing bees to store more honey while expending fewer resources. Now, we need to understand how honeybees produce beeswax hive. It's a quite intensive process as young worker bees shoulder the responsibility of producing beeswax, a vital task for the colony. Young worker bees have an important job, making beeswax for the hive. When a young bee grows into an adult, it starts producing wax. These bees have special parts on their bellies that make liquid wax. This wax turns into thin pieces when it touches the air. As bees get older, these wax-making parts become less active, and younger bees take over the job. When they're really good at making wax, a healthy bee can make about 8 small wax pieces in 12 hours. It might surprise you, but the whole bee colony needs around 1,000 of these small wax pieces just to make a single gram of beeswax for their home. In short, for every gram of wax a bee produces it must consume up to 8 grams of honey. It's quite evident that the strong motivation to build efficiently stems from the fact that using as little wax as possible leaves more honey for food. But is this idea correct? It surely makes sense. But if bees made their honeycomb using cylinders, there would be gaps between each cell, and the whole structure wouldn't work well. The same problem happens with shapes like pentagons and octagons. They also leave gaps, so they're not the best choice. Imagine if each bee made a unique cell shape to fit exactly next to its neighbor. That could work, but it would take a lot of time and might not be very practical. One bee would have to finish before the next one starts, and that's not efficient. So, having a shape that can be easily repeated and fits without gaps is a better idea. The square, triangle, and hexagon are the only shapes that can fit together nicely without leaving gaps. Among these, the hexagon is the winner because it uses the least material while making the most space. But why do bees prefer hexagons? Back around 36 BC, a Roman scholar named Marcus Terentius Varro wrote down the earliest known idea about honeycombs. He suggested that if you want to divide an area into equal parts, like cells, using the least amount of material, wax, the best way is to make a pattern of regular hexagons, like a honeycomb. 
He couldn't prove it, so people considered it an idea for about 2,000 years. Then, in 1999, a mathematician named Thomas Hales, who worked at the University of Michigan, found a proof. A hexagonal pattern is the most efficient engineering design. Natural selection process favors efficiency, resulting in structures that reflect a sophisticated underlying mathematical principle. This answer, born from a straightforward question, is truly exquisite. Thanks for watching. Feel free to share your insights in the comments below.